All right. Now, among the fundamental reasons given for the sell-off in the stock market today is Apple uh, getting, you know, bludgeoned over this idea that maybe it is not looking at as robust a holiday sell season as was earlier thought to be the case. One of its key suppliers itself down in excess of 20 percent on reports that demand just might not be there for particularly the, the new iPhones. Uh, there's no way to quantify that, and so we're actually knee-deep in the middle of the, the selling season here. But technicians look at other things than just what fundamentally might be happening among them and among the best in the business, the stock market cycles. Editor and publisher noted bear, Peter Alides. Uh, we talk to bulls. We talk to bears. Uh, Peter is one of the biggest in the latter camp. Good to see you, my friend. How you doing, Neil? I get, I'm, kind of, I'm getting the feeling that... Uh, I get called in on these big market down days as a <laughs> neurophysiologist or maybe a plumber to fix the leak, which I can't do. But yeah, I hear I I, you know, and, and, and bears are damned if they do, damned if they don't. I understand that. But there's got to be a mix of opinion on markets, and we try to balance that out. Absolutely. You've been concerned about this market for a while. I don't know whether today or what has been happening in the last month or so is indicative of the stuff that you were worried about. But, but what have been your chief worries going in even past today? Well, it usually boils down to technical things, Neil. You recall, you know, I, I was, I look back over the last year or so where you and I have spoken, and it was almost exactly a year ago where I presented you my sign of the bear, and that sign of the bear said that we were within about eight, within eight to ten weeks at the most of an important market top. Lo and behold, January 26th, there was a very important top in the market. Now, some people might argue that the S&P and the Dow have gone to marginal new highs beyond that, but the most important index, Neil, is the New York Stock Exchange Composite Index. That no, not only has not gone above the January high, but it now has a series of higher, high, lower highs and lower lows. And that's the definition of a bear market. So why do you follow that NYSE development um, if, if other markets don't necessarily confirm it, or, or are they beginning to? Well, you're always going to get different ind indexes right. do different things, especially at market tops. But uh, I maintain the New York Composite, New York Stock Exchange Composite Index is probably one of the most important ones simply because it contains all the stocks all the common stocks on the New York Stock Exchange. So this tells you what the great deal stocks. Now, technology stocks are off on their own. Financial stocks are off on their own. We have to pay attention to all of them. Usually at major market tops, which I believe we're forming, you see a kind of staggering where one will hit a high here, right. one a couple of months later. And we've seen something like that happen, Neil. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm looking at Apple very much uh, close to bear market territory, a host of other technology uh, stocks well in it. Uh, I think a third or close to a half S&P 500 stocks similarly, you know, in, in selling off. Uh, play it out for me then. What do you see happening? Okay. There are two very much opposing forces happening right now. As it turns out on a seasonality basis, which we look at as technicians, this period from October of the midterm presidential election through June of next year is the most favorable period within the four-year presidential election. So the market has that working in its favor. Does that guarantee an up market over that time? Of course not. But it does tell us that if you're going to be bearish, you'd best perhaps be careful over the next eight or nine months because it is the most favorable time period within this four-year presidential cycle that we look at it in terms of longer term market moves. Now, on the other side of that, we're facing what I consider and a lot of good value people consider to be the most overvalued market in history. So sometimes the seasonality cannot overcome these bear market forces that are working. One thing to be aware of, Neil, is there's there's been a very important 20-year cycle in the market that has marked really important market bottoms, 1942, 1962, 1982. 82, by the way, is the last time that stocks were truly undervalued. Hmm. P.E. ratios under 6, dividend yields over 6. 1982, 2002, we add 20 to that and we're talking about 2022, which I'm not making that prediction now, but I'm saying if we're going to have a bear market, it, will, it could well last into 2022 and be a very severe one at that.